This video is sponsored by Unity. Currently on the Unity Asset Store, there is a mega bundle sale where you can save up to 90% on some great hand-picked assets. If you're at all interested, please check it out using the link in the description below or in the comments. And if you actually decide to make any purchases, that'll help in supporting the channel too. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some more mirror multiplayer. Today we'll be focusing on input and cameras, so we'll be getting the player's camera set up using Cinemachine, and then we'll also be using the new Unity input system. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So this video will be split up into four steps. Step one, we'll be focusing on getting the packages sorted so that we've got the input system and Cinemachine all working and we've created our input actions asset. Step two, we'll be doing the coding for the actual camera controller. Then for step three, we'll be setting it up on the player, so we'll add the camera to the player prefab, make sure that's all right, make sure all the dependencies are set. And then finally for step four, we'll test it. So we'll do a built client, run it in the editor, and we'll see that on each client, we can actually control our own player's camera. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So right now you'll see in the package manager, I currently don't have either of the two. So we're gonna search Cinema Machine. Okay. And then change this to be all projects. Cinema Machine, install. Okay. Then once that's done, we're gonna go for input. Search again, the new input system, install. Then once that's done, head over to edit, project settings, player, other settings, and scroll down. And just make sure that active input handling is on both rather than old or new, we want it on both. So once you've changed that, if you do change it and you have to, then it might ask you to restart the Unity editor. Just go ahead and do that and then you'll be back here where I am right now. I'm also quickly gonna go to the event system and just press this replace button. Okay, and that just updates it to use the input actions asset. Now we're actually going to create our own one for our controls. So I'll go right click, create a new folder and I'll make a folder, oops, I'll make a folder for input, there we go. And in that input folder, we'll create a new input actions asset and we'll call it controls. We'll open up controls and I'll drag it over. Okay, so here we want to make a control scheme and I'm gonna make one called keyboard and mouse. And it requires a keyboard and a mouse. These are both required, save, save. Okay, so now what we want to do is want to make a map for the player. So let's make a player map and an action. We'll call it look. So this will be for the camera. Okay, it's gonna be a value rather than a button and it uses a vector two, or well, that's what it returns. And then the actual um, binding for it is gonna be the mouse delta. So mouse delta is just how you move your mouse. So if we move left, then it'll be minus on the X, right will be minus on the Y, up will be positive on, uh, sorry, left, negative X, right, positive X, and then up, Y, down, minus Y. Make sure that's all saved, okay? And then what we want to do is we also want to generate a C-sharp class for this. So I'm going to put it in uh, assets, and then we want tutorials, then lobby, scripts, inputs, controls, or inputs, okay? And then the actual class name will be controls. And the namespace will be, uh, what are we going with? Dapper dino dot tutorials dot lobby dot inputs apply. Okay. And once that's done, it's going to compile because it's just made us some code. And if we make sure it's all correct, we'll go ahead to scripts. We've got an inputs folder and then controls is in there and it's all generated. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and make a script, the player camera controller. So we want a vector two for the max follow offset. And rather than the max, it's more like just the limits. So we can go as low as minus one and as high as six. You'll see when we use this later in Unity, once we add the Cinema Machine camera, this will be a thing we can actually change and we're changing it in code. We're just setting the limits. Feel free to change these values. These are just ones that work for me. And then the camera velocity. So this is the X velocity and the Y velocity. Then reference to the player transform. So this is gonna be what we rotate. It's gonna be one of those games where when you look up and down, you rotate the camera, but when you turn left and right, you actually rotate the player. Then finally, the Cinema Machine virtual camera, we need a reference to that because we're actually going to need to change the values on this thing. One other thing we're gonna need actually, which will cache because we can't actually drag this in, is a Cinema Machine transposer. Okay, this is actually not a normal component. It's a special uh, Cinema Machine component. And this you actually get from the virtual camera. So we're actually going to write a line of code where we say virtual camera dot get and then the transposer and we'll call this transposer. Okay, so the first method is overriding on start authority. So this is from the network behavior. This gets called on the object that has authority over this game object. So when we set this up in Unity, we're actually going to disable 
the camera on all the player prefabs. So, well, on the play prefab, we're going to disable the camera. So by default, when you spawn in, your camera is disabled. But then if we start this on our authority object, so basically if the player is ours, then we're going to enable it. So each player gets their own individual camera enabled. Okay, so get the... Also, we're also going to cache the um, cinema machine component here. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. Yeah, we set the camera active and we enabled this component because this component doesn't need to be enabled unless it's um, ours. So we set it to be disabled in Unity and then we enable it in the script here if it's ours. So the next part is to hook up the input. So we want to cache a private controls, which is referenced to our controls asset from earlier. This is a generated file from our input actions asset. And then on start authority, we want to set controls equal to a new controls. And then we also want to say on controls.player.look, so this is the access we made earlier for the mouse delta. When that is performed, we want to subscribe. Well, so we're subscribing on awake so that when that is performed, we want to call this method look. So we're calling this look method. I've just made a private void takes in a vector two. That's it. It doesn't do any logic yet. So it's called look and it takes in. And then from the context, we want to read the value as a vector two. OK, and that's going to work because we told it in the input actions to be a vector two. So this works then over here. On enable and on disable, we want to enable and disable the input. Now, if you've ever used Cinema Machine, sorry, if you've ever used the new input system before, this is familiar to you, hopefully. And then these tags mean that this only gets called on the client, okay? So the server doesn't actually run this, and that makes sense because the server doesn't have input. And then finally, the actual logic for moving the camera. So just before we start, the follow offset, as a better explanation here, the distance vector that the transposer will attempt to maintain from the follow target. So when we actually set up the camera, we're going to drag in the player to tell the camera this is what you're following. And the follow offset is effectively how far away you're going to be. And that changes based on whether you're like looking up, down, you know, like how the camera is, that changes. So we're actually going to be changing that here. Now we cache the delta time because we're using it in two places. I just thought I'd do that. And then the follow offset is going to be clamped, which means that it can't go below this and below, sorry, above this. So the follow offset, remember, can't go below minus one above six. Okay, so that's what these two parameters are. And this first one is actually the calculation based on our movement of the mouse. Okay, so our Y movement is up and down. Remember, Y is up and down, whereas X is left and right. So our X axis is going to rotate the player. So as we move our mouse left and right, the player rotates. As we move it up and down, the camera uh, follow offset changes. And that actually is what makes the camera move up and down. Okay, so here's the code for that. All these variables were defined up the top, up at top. And then once we've clamped this follow offset, I mean, I could equally just set this all to be right here. You know, I could just do this. That would still do the same thing, you know. Okay, just bring it one line less. And then finally, yeah, player transform.rotate. We're not rotating on the X or the Z, just the Y. Okay, and make sure it's times delta time, otherwise it messes up. It'll be like too fast or too slow based on your FPS. And then this is it, actually. This is the entire camera controller. So now let's go on step three and set this all up in Unity. So go to the player object and create an empty game object on the player. And I'm going to call it camera underscore player. OK, and then we want this to have a cinema machine, vir a virtual camera. OK, I'm also going to add a uh, collider. Actually, no, you have to do it like this, I think. So click on the select and then collider. There we go. So the first thing is we're just going to go through all the settings. So we're going to follow the player body. So the player body is going to be the actual center of the player. Remember, this is the, the base, but we want to follow the center. So let's put that in. Okay, and that's also the look at as well as the follow. I'm going to change this to never. We don't want to mess with the lens or the transi uh, transitions. Then the body is going to be a transposer. And for this, we want to set um, this to be minus five. These are just values that I found that work for me. Okay, and we don't want any damping. That's up to you. You can choose to tweak those things. Then for aim, we want composer. Okay. And then here we're going to set the offset to be one on the X, one on the Y. The smoothing, you can't put it down to zero. Three is the least there. Okay. I'm just going to set all these to zero, 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 zero. And that's the aim. Then for the collider, we're going to say we want to ignore the player tag, which means that we don't, you know, glitch out on the player. We want to collide against terrain and everything else, but not not players. OK, so ignore the player tag. And then we don't want to really change anything else. Um, avoid of skills requires a look at target. Well, we've already got one, so it's fine. That's just that that warning, in my opinion, should go away when you've got a target. It's just a bit annoying being there. But yeah, feel free to tweak these settings. This just simply makes it so the camera doesn't like go through walls when you back up to a wall. It just basically zooms into the player. Okay. Now I think that's everything for that. So if we go over to the player object itself, okay, 
So this is where our network identity is. We're going to put the camera controller here. Okay. Then the camera controller itself is going to be disabled by default. Um, those values are what I used in mine, so it works just fine. Obviously, feel free to tweak them yourself. The player transform is ourselves, and the camera is over here. And that's all set up like that. So I think we've done everything. Let's go give it a test. Okay, so before we actually test it, I need to go over a mistake I made. So I was actually using uh, on enable on the controls object uh, in on enable, but I'm also making it in on start. And one thing is, if you guys have used Unity a lot before, you'll have realized that start gets called after on enable, meaning the object doesn't actually exist here. So it throws us an error. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that it exists. So the way I'm going to go and do that, there's different ways to approach this. I'm going to make another controls thing, but it's going to be a property. It's going to be just a getter. And what's it going to do? It's going to say, well, if you're trying to get it and controls does not equal null, then just return controls. But if it does equal null, then return controls equals to a new controls. Now, some people might say, why don't you just say equals new controls at the start? This doesn't actually work. Uh, something to do with, you know, how the input system works in Unity. You can't start it like effectively in a constructor. I think it might actually be to do with the fact that Unity, you can't have a constructor for a mono behavior and keep in mind a network behavior is a mono behavior. So that might be why. But anyway, we need to return, not return, we need to change um, all the lowercase controls to be uppercase. Okay. And then we don't need this set here. So now this should work. Okay. So that's the scripting change that's fixed. Keep in mind, if you guys get confused, you know, the script, the code is all on my GitHub page. The entire project is down below. Then we need to make sure in the player game object prefab that the player camera, the camera player, whatever is disabled. Okay. Make sure the game object's disabled. And one last thing, we need to actually go to the scene. So uh, scenes mapper one, make sure our camera has the Cinemachine brain on it. This needs to be on the camera for it to actually work with Cinemachine. We don't need to change anything on here though. You can, if you'd like to. Okay. And now if we build, it should all work. Okay. So host ready, join ready, start. Okay. And let's just bring this up. Okay. So you'll notice I haven't hidden my mouse cursor yet. So you guys can, you know, do that and stuff. But point is I move my mouse. I can look around. Okay. And when I'm moving my, my mouse, the player is actually rotating. You can't see it because there's no way on the player to see that. But if we go back into Unity, you can see. So let's just put the game window over here. Yeah, and we go to our player object. Okay, look, you can see as I move, the player rotates, which means that if we then hold forwards and we had, if we had movement input, which we'll do in the next video or maybe the one after that, then we'd actually go off in that direction. Okay, um, obviously the actual rotation is a bit weird when the screen's like this, but if it's full screen like a normal game would be, it works just fine. Obviously, you might want to tweak sensitivity and stuff, but that works. And if we go over here, okay, so remember this is um, like this, but this player is for the client. So if I go over to the built client and move that to the side, okay. Now, we can't actually see this happening because to actually see rotations and stuff, we need to add one of a component that I forgot. So if we go back to spawn prefabs player, uh, we're not going to bother testing this because I'm going to show you that it works. Just add the uh, network transform component and give client authority. Because for now, we're not gonna do this server side because then um, we'd have to do lag compensation and everything. We'll just trust the client that when they rotate and move that it's uh, fine, okay? But yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Check out my affiliate link down below. Go check out the Mega Bundle. It sounds quite interesting. I might actually buy something off there too. Let me know down below what you wanna see next. But apart from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Beardod Eye, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Joris Letter, Heidi Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website and the affiliate link. If you could go check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.